Well, Dan, thanks for joining us at ADAPT's Digital Edge here in Melbourne. And today's theme is exponential impact driving transformation at scale. In your role at the ASX, what does that theme mean to you? Well, I guess it, it does mean that once you start to get beyond just looking at technology modernization as a, as a goal in and of itself and start to think about the impact that technology and digital transformation has on your customers, on your supply chain, on your partners, uh, you can genuinely increase the impact that you can have on the business, both on a top line revenue growth, but also and perhaps equally importantly, uh, profit and, and, and efficiency. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly that ability to capture greater value from your own operations and indeed your customers. But as a financial market infrastructure firm, if you like, mm. there's also that ecosystem side to that value. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. Are you able to talk, expand a little bit more about how you're working across the ecosystem to realise some of that value? So perhaps just in the context of uh, of Australia, everything we do essentially addresses an ecosystem of one form or another. You know, whether it's our equity market where we work with our trading participants and brokers uh, through to clearing and settlement where we're connecting to all the banks and the, the back offices of, of some of those same custodians and traders, um, or the tech and data business where essentially we run a technology ecosystem in the ALC, the Australian Liquidity Centre, um, or the wide number of customers that we distributed our data to. So. I think one of the things that's really interesting about an exchange, and it, it's perhaps been the foundation of an exchange from its beginning, but is perhaps also the case now for many other firms as well, is you only really realise value through working with your customers and partners. And you inevitably see yourself as part of a ecosystem and playing just one role within that ecosystem. Uh, so I, I think digital transformation of industries brings ecosystem partners closer together. Uh, and I think thinking through things uh, across the supply chain beyond just the four walls of your enterprise, I think is fundamental to the way that organizations now need to work together. Yeah. And we talked about a little bit, you know, actually solving business problems, not just technical problems as well, because certainly the technicalities underpin some of that value we're going to capture, not only for our own organization, but in terms of some of those sustainability outcomes mm -hmm. in our ecosystem. Um, and then delivering on some of that economic value that our end customers want as well. As you think about driving these changes, not only within the ASX, but more broadly as well, how have you gone about that sustainability piece and what role does data play? So we, yeah, we had a really interesting conversation regarding sustainability and the role that data plays within that uh, earlier today in one of the roundtables. Um, you know, my view obviously uh, is, is informed by the, the, the role that ASX plays being a, if you like, a provider of data f that informs financial decisions and investment decisions, you know, across Australia and people who participate in Australia's financial markets. We don't do that by any means by ourselves. You know, we really rely upon the data that comes to us through the listed companies who are our customers from a listing perspective. Um, and obviously we distribute that data both directly but also through uh, many channel partners like the large market data vendors, the Bloombergs and Refinitiv and the like. Uh, and so, you know, customers of Australia's financial markets rely upon that data to be accurate, timely, granular, you know, detailed and, and something that can be relied upon. Now, traditionally, that has been financial data. There's been orders, pricing, books, you know, these sorts of, these sorts of, uh, you know, indicators which people have used traditionally uh, to drive many investment decisions. But in the sustainability space, there's a growing demand for non-financial data as well. So information about, you know, greenhouse gas emissions or, or, or carbon usage or carbon footprint or social inclusion. Um, we haven't yet as a, in, an industry agreed, you know, on the final standard that will be used. And I think that there's a wide variety of data that, that, that investors need to, to, to contemplate now. And, and there's a, a whole series of different you know, standards that have been developed in response to investor demand or, you know, really the market demand mm -hmm. um, for, for better data about just not, not just the financials, but actually the long term sustainability of an organization. Um, I think this is a really important problem to solve, again, at an ecosystem level rather than in any one firm. Um, because as we are all well aware, we're going to be thinking about not just our own emissions, but the emissions associated with our supply chain, both upstream and downstream. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and in order to arrive at that, we do need to think about industry solutions. We do need to think about standards. There will be technology solutions that are part of that, but you know, perhaps even more important than the technology solutions is the agreement about what are the quality standards, what are the the um, the, the protocols, what are the the targets, and if you like, what's the the way that we can get comfortable that the same level of rigor and the same level of reliability can be applied to non-financial data, which is which you know which is going to be increasingly important in driving investment decisions. Absolutely. This is going to take a long time. Is one thing I would also you know flag because. You know, as we talked about at the roundtable, there's a there's a number of industries that are at different levels of preparedness for the level of transparency that's now being, uh, you know, sought. And because it will take time to build towards these agreements, with the technology fundamentals, sure, but also the incentives and metrics for change. Almost, we're saying here's now the opportunity to get started, to have that fast follow mentality, and in that way, I'm guessing that the ASX can almost play that trusted data hub role because when we think about sustainability more deeply, certainly 80% of the information, be that intangible or financial, will exist outside of the organisation. So as you think about how your organisation is approaching that opportunity, what role can you play in advocating for and coaching through some of your customers, but also the consortia you're working with in driving some of these changes? As it is today, a number of listed companies use our uh, services in order to you know, submit and then for us to distribute their listed company disclosures. And that includes, in many cases, the detailed sustainability reporting that they're, that they're already completing. Um, they would typically report also on uh, cl risk or climate risk as it affects their business. Um, I think the role that we could potentially play is, is at the moment that's largely in a relatively unstructured format. Uh, you know, there's PDFs that we're, we're receiving and distributing. Um, I think we are very interested in, in understanding how we could potentially be, a, you know, a portal that could be used to submit more than just non-structured information. But we are equally mindful of the fact that we don't want to create a burden on listed companies that's un, un, unreasonable. And so I see a critical role for government uh, and regulators in, in actually agreeing the standard and then, I suppose, guiding the rollout of it across companies, both listed and non-listed. I see the role that we could potentially play is in, in the first instance, educating our listed companies on what it means to be looking after this sort of reporting in, 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 a, in a good way. And our, our listings team has done some very, very well, uh, well, well attended webinars and, and education sessions on exactly that, on some of the frameworks that are already in use uh, and some of the ways to meet investor demand for good information in this space. Um, I certainly watch with interest as other exchanges have developed, in some cases, portals or reporting solutions, and, and that's something that we would absolutely contemplate, but we, we are, and we do remain very mindful of not seeking to put any extra additional burden on the company, uh, listed companies who already do have a, a large number of obligations as it is. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's both simplifying, but also deepening the insights that we're getting, both on listed companies, but also, you know, in Australia, we, we're very much built on that small and medium enterprise, that entrepreneurial nature, and not making it harder for those startups to get off the ground. Um, so on the one hand, we're looking for the right data, we're looking to support these small organisations to build up to the point where they can provide that kind of information. Because ultimately, when we look at other jurisdictions, we're seeing change where regulators are starting to be able to pull through this information in real time to then adjust policy and incentivize change. And as you think about how as an organization you can support the smaller end of town to make these changes happen, and in fact focusing on people, in particular the newer generation who are demanding these kinds of changes, what approach do you suggest? Well, I think that you probably you probably touched on it already. I think it does start with education, enablement, um, and then I think you know that you've got to recognise that industries will change over time. Um, that 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 these aren't you know bright line switches that you can just switch on and expect things to be perfect. Um, you know, quickly we do have to be mindful of the economy that we're in, the industries that we support, and the wide range of companies that are on the ASX. Uh, so, I think that education is probably the key. Okay.